So here we call our ladies wives, queens, queens of the church, and so they are, you know. We're blessed, man, to see, see ladies to stand up and want to honor God and praise God, you know. Because, you know, we think we are the bosses, but you know, all the time, you know, they tell us split what to do, right? So, you know, we are blessed, praise God, you know. Praise God, it's an honor to, to, to be here when you see stuff like that, you know, when you see the Holy Spirit moving people's lives, you know, when you see true, true people, true Christians, true, I'm telling you, when you see stuff like that, you know, just moves your heart to another level, just spiritually, you know, spiritually pulls your heart away, you know, and uh, I just wanted to, uh, you know, even the word today, man, how good was the word, eh? Amen. You know, I mean, the word was awesome, you know. Well, he's awesome, you know, he speaks a little time, but let by the Spirit of God too, you know. And that's, that's how it should be all the time. You know, it's not about us bringing the book and painting it on my head. You just let God do it, you know. And amazing stuff happens. And I was, I was, I really enjoyed it today, you know. Amen. I enjoyed it today. I thank God that I'm, I'm a part of it, you know. I thank God that I'm here for my tea, you know. I thank God that uh, we have church four times a week, you know. I thank God that we pray for one another. I thank God that we are a family. And I just want to get into prayer and I just want to thank God for what he has done for us. Amen. Father, I just come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, Father. Father, we just want to honor you. We will praise you, Father. Father, we thank you, Father. We thank you for our children. We thank you for one another. We thank you for our, our area. We thank you for Brother Lee. We thank you for the other churches. Father, we ask that you move by your spirit in the other churches, Father God. Father, we ask for salvation, Father God, in all areas of Brother Big, Father God, and wherever we travel. Father, we ask that you strengthen every Christian that walks on the earth, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, that you anoint every Christian, Father. Father, that they want to get up, Father God. Get off the seat, Father God. Move forward, Father God. When they see that door to the gear open, Father God, they know that they are the key to that door, Father God. They walk through that door, Father God. They don't need a key, Father God. They are the key, Father. Father, we want to just thank you, Father God, that we are not starving, Father, that you feed us every day, Father God. We just want to thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Father. We thank you for this place, Father God. Because it's meant to be for us, Father God. We take it for our pastors, we take it for our leaders, we take it, Father, we are blessed with children. Father, children that know you, Father, children that will worship you. Father, we want to honor you today, Father. Honor you sorely, Father, because you are worthy of honor, Father God. You are worthy, Father God. There is no one like you, Father God. You are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You are the fastest man on earth. You are the fastest, you are the strongest. There is nothing that's impossible for you. Father, we want to honor you and praise you today. Father, thank you, Father. Father, we just ask, Father God, that you lift us to another level, Father God. Lift us to another level in the spirit, Father, in your spirit. Father, we claim it. We claim victory, Father God. I will be, Father God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You know, it's a song of that. You know, I find it hard to, to sing because I don't know the songs completely. But it's uh, the one that I really, really believe that uh, it's uh, you are worthy of the Lord. But I need help, I need something. Worthy of the Lord. Well, I'll sing what I know. Let's go. Because I believe that. Uh, you know, it's a song that, that really is worthy. He's worthy of all praise. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. 
Jesus, you are worthy of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy of the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy of the Lord. Yes, Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy of it all. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy of it all. Oh, you are worthy of it all. So worthy. So worthy. We are worthy, man. You know, you know, truly, it's an honor for me to just grab my brother's hand, you know, and say, pray. I love you. But mean it from the heart, you know you love me. He knows I love him. I know he loves you, God. You know, that's the truth. You see, you know, that's how it should be. That's how Jesus wants a relationship with us. He wants us to hold his hand. He wants to walk with us. But we are the demonstration. We are the demonstration of his love. Praise God. He is worthy of the Lord.
God again. He's a good God. Just give him all the honor and glory and praise for everything he's done for me and that. Uh, Thank the Lord for our visitors there tonight too and that. Uh, Thank God for all the marriage. He's a good God and that. Uh, I'll give him all the honor and glory and praise. He's done so much for me. Thank you for my pastor and wife, family of God and children. Thank you for all the things. Each one of you this evening in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We are really grateful unto our Lord because uh, we truly believe we are preparing ourselves <coughs> for the soon return of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My precious brothers and sisters. You know, when we read in the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, 
Let us make men in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the earth and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Amen. My precious brothers and sisters, when God created everything, it came a time when he said, let us make men, oh my, in our image. We are the image of God. Amen. That's why he said in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. He went to prepare for us a place. <laughs> and he will come and fetch us so that we can be with him forever. Amen. You know, I was very much blessed this morning when our precious brother Bruce was preaching. And then there was a scripture that was coming in my mind. Because when he was mentioning about the word of God, Listen, brothers and sisters, there is, there is nothing that can be above the word of God. He created heaven and earth by his own word. As it is written in the Bible, you know, brothers and sisters, in Romans chapter 1, you know, the gospel. The gospel is the power of God. And that word he has given unto us. I always say, if God must judge us according to the Catholic Church, then I say it's unfair. He can't judge us according to the Pentecostal Church, Methodist, he will use his own words. Amen. Amen. He will use his own words to judge each one of us. Amen. And as the brother was mentioning, this scripture came in my mind. My precious brother, may God bless you. You know, as we are sharing the word of God, you know, there are brothers following us from Japan, from uh, Africa, from wherever, because it is life. In Amos chapter 8, listen to what the Bible says. Verse 11. Behold, you know, when you see behold in the Bible, God is, you know, is drawing our attention. Behold, the day is come, saith the Lord God. And I will send a famine in the land. Not the famine of bread, nor of thirst or of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now listen to verse 12. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east, they shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. As my precious brother was mentioning this morning, there are people going to their churches, but many of them will go to hell. We say, but how come? Yes! Can you imagine? Remember, brothers and sisters, we shall be with him for eternity, forever. God cannot take confusion in heaven. As the brother was mentioning, you know, my, my brothers and sisters, there is what we call the, you know, maybe let, let me read it. Galatians chapter 5. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, because I, I don't want to 
to say something which comes from my, my mind, but I must read it. The word, the word, the word, the word. Galatians chapter 5, from verse 18. Listen to what the Bible is saying. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, having, murders, drunkenness, revealing, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. And I like the way the book of Psalms describes a man. When you read Psalms chapter 1, the Bible is describing a man like a tree. Brethren, you will never see a tree standing upright like this. It will bend one side or the other side, you know. Now, if today your life is bending towards what we have read, we have just read here, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, and that, that list of your life is bending on the devil's side. The day they will cut that tree, it will fall on devil's side. We can fast. We can pray. We can do whatsoever we wish to do. That man is lost. Salvation is not in any church. Salvation is in Jesus Christ. Amen. You must meet him. Amen. You must walk with him. As our precious brother was mentioned, you know I was very much blessed. Since you believed and you met the Lord Jesus Christ, <coughs> Is he really your master? Because you could tell people, men are calling me master and master, 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 but they don't obey the will of God. They go to their churches. Some of them are very good people. But remember that young rich man? He came to the Lord asking him about, you know, eternal life. Yes. And then say, okay, no. I do this, I do that, I do that. And the Lord said, okay, go and sell everything and come and follow me. Yes. He refused. Yes. <coughs> because the things of this world were in his heart. Yes. Was Deuteronomy chapter 6. From verse 4, we go down. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart. Amen. Yes. Yes. There is no a single room for anything of this world. God will not take confusion in heaven. No. And when you continue down, Galatians chapter 5 from verse 22. Listen to what the Bible says. But the fruit of the Spirit is oh my. And it starts with love. You know why? God is love. Amen. Amen. Oh my. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there.
There is no law. Amen. Verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with their affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Brothers and sisters, please. Heaven doesn't belong to any preacher. Heaven doesn't belong to any pastor. Heaven doesn't belong to any bishop. Heaven belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen. Remember, as I, as I was mentioning to you, I think two weeks ago or last Sunday, the one who is walking with you right now will take you where he is at the end of your journey. Amen. Amen. If the devil is walking with you because you have been a very good friend of him, at the end of your journey, he will take you where he is. If Jesus Christ is walking with you now, at the end of your journey, of course, he will take you where he is. Genesis chapter 5 tells us about one of our brothers, Enoch. He walked with God. Amen. Yes. It was not a dream. It was a reality. Yes. If Enoch walked with God, we also can walk with God. Amen. His life pleased God. And the Bible says, God took him. Yes. Listen, brothers and sisters, I beg you. Psalms, yes. Psalms 145. Oh my. I like sometimes when I'm reading. Yes. Psalms 145. Listen what the Bible is saying. Psalms 145. Oh my. Before I read it, listen, brethren, there is so much confusion among people who call themselves believers in such a way that sometimes I wonder. I met a brother somewhere. He was telling me, Brother Frank, let me tell you that I'm already raptured. I say, oh, 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 tell me, tell me, what do you mean? He said, no, I'm already, I'm already raptured. I say, you mean going up? Because listen, the, the Bible says in the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, from verse 13 up to 18, it will come a time, you know, oh, maybe let me read it, because I don't want to, yes. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 13. <clears throat> Listen to what the Bible says. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Now listen from verse 15. For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord. Not a preacher speaking, but the word of the Lord. That we, which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel, yes. and with the trump of God, yes. and the dead in Christ mm. shall rise first. Yes. The dead in Christ. Mm. So you must be found in Christ mm. shall rise first. Then we, which are alive, and the remain shall be caught up together with them, in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. Now a brother told me, he has already experienced this. I say, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. 
I'm telling you, he goes to the church with a Bible, but he believes that he's already been captured. Too much confusion. But praise be our God, because we remain in the Bible. This is the time of the preparation of the bride of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Amen. The Lord is coming to fetch a bride. Amen. And that bride must be prepared according to Revelation chapter 19 from verse 7 to 9. The bride of Jesus Christ must be ready. And that's why we are gathering in this fashion. And the Lord himself makes sure that he gives us everything for our preparation. Amen. And that's why the Holy Spirit has been given unto us. Listen, brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit is, is the teacher. Yes. Yes. He comes to teach us exactly the way we ought to walk clearly because many people don't walk according to the Bible. Listen, I was about to read Psalms 145, verse 17. Listen to what the Bible is saying. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. 18. The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. Amen. There are so much deception in the churches in a way that uh, we wonder, we are wondering exactly what is happening there. Listen, the truth that is the only thing that will make us free. Amen. 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 And the devil comes in many denominations to take the truth away from many people. According to the Bible, the Jehovah of the Old Testament is Jesus Christ in the New Testament. Yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Listen, brothers and sisters, when Moses met Jehovah, he said, Yes, you are sending me. What's your name? My name is I am. Amen. It's not a mistake when the Lord Jesus Christ in the New Testament comes and say, I am the way. I am the light. I am, I am, I am. Amen. Yes. He could even say, yes. you will die in your sins if you don't believe that I am he. And can you imagine, brothers and sisters, when we come back to the Bible, the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 16, that, uh, you know, he's talking about the salvation and the baptism. Salvation connects to the baptism. And the Lord comes in Matthew chapter 28 and says, go and baptize them in the name. Yes. He never said names in the name of the Father, come up, the Son, come up, and the Holy Spirit. Yes. Listen, you were not there when the Lord gave that commandment. Peter was there. Matthew was there. John was there. Mark was there. And then he told them, Wait in the upper room until when you'll be in 
with power from above. None of them actually they were afraid of the Romans and the, all those people. Now, when you read your Bible carefully from Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came for the first time, hallelujah, I like it. <laughs> You know, when I was for the first time in Jerusalem, when I saw the upper room, I said, yeah. Amen. Listen, brethren, there were 120 people there. Mary was there also. And when the Holy Spirit came down, you know, they start uttering, you know, speaking in tongues and everything. And the people who were around there, he said, no, these people, they are drunk. And now Peter, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. that was the first sermon. Mm -hmm. Because those people say, but uh, what is happening to you? What shall we do? Read your Bible carefully. Mm -hmm. And when Peter was answering, actually it was the Holy Spirit speaking through Peter. Yes. Say, repent, each one of you. Yes. And be baptized in the name yes. of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of your sins. <laughs> Today, it's a terrible, terrible subject of debate in many churches. No, it must be name of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Okay. Do you know someone here on earth whose name is Father? Do you know someone here on earth whose name is Son? Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ told them, go and baptize everyone in the name of the Father. You must know what is the name of the Father. The name of the Son and the name of the Holy Spirit. Listen, brothers and sisters, I beg you. Too much confusion. But praise be to God. We are standing, you know, in good, good ground. As the brother was mentioning this morning, you know, on the rock. And that rock is Christ Himself. Amen. Listen, brethren. The Bible says here, Psalms 145, verse 19. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. <coughs> Do you fear God? He also will hear their cry and will save them. My precious brothers and sisters, I beg you. <coughs> what happened with the children of Israel <coughs> in the natural <coughs> it's what also is happening with us in the spiritual <coughs> listen brethren in the book of Exodus chapter 12 <coughs> Exodus chapter 12 <coughs> There will be a group of people, listen, I like it. It will come a time when we shall be in heaven, rejoicing. Say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, because you have shown us thy word. You have given us thy word. I read with you, two weeks ago, I'm not going to read it today. The entire world is kept by his words. Amen. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment 
I am the road and the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. The same is also happening with us. We were in Egypt, taken out of Egypt, went to the wilderness, and now we, are, we have entered our Canaan. Canaan typifies the Holy Spirit. That is our land. Brothers and sisters, no wonder the Bible says, you must be born again. John chapter 3. If you are not yet born again, you can't even understand the kingdom of God. Listen. The word of God, as we mentioned several times, you know, even to our visitors today, I think for their sake I have to repeat it. <clears throat> If you see a pregnant woman coming in front of you, you know she received a seed from her husband. And then she may try to hide it. It will be impossible. She may try the first week, the second week, the first month, the second month, but it will come a time when the uterus, you know when you come to see us in the hospital, we say, oh yeah, something is moving inside. You know, when the baby is growing inside, it's because the mother received a seed from the husband. The word of God, according to the book of John chapter 6, is the seed of God. When you receive the seed of God in you, that seed in you will transform your life. A pregnant woman, it will come a time when she will refuse to eat a certain number of food. Even the way she walks will change. The same also applies to the children of God. The more you receive the word of God, Christ himself is forming in you. And then you will be exactly what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5. You become the light of the world. As our brother was mentioning this morning, people will see you. They will see that there is a change here. Because the word of God is the seed of God. <laughs> and the seed of God in you will remove everything which belongs to Satan. Even if you used to be a smoker, it will come a time when they can give you cigarettes. You say, no, the taste gone. Yes. Can you imagine, brethren, we have so many people who are suffering from mental illnesses. Do you know why? Because the solution is Jesus. But put people put Jesus aside, they go for alcohol, drugs, whatsoever, you can name it. When you read Isaiah chapter 53, you will go, verse 5, He is our healer. Amen. Yes. We have the solution here, but people don't want that solution. Yes. And this is the biggest problem that we have. Here the Lord is saying, when I will see the blood, I will pass over you. Mm -hmm. 
Now, to show you what our Lord did, you know, during the creation, the Lord, God made Adam to sleep and took Eve from his side. On the cross, he made our Lord Jesus Christ to sleep and he took us from his side. When he was bleeding there, we were in him. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. That precious blood which came from the cross there, you know, when he was hanged there on the cross, has got the power yes. of transformation. When you come in the presence of God, you call upon the precious blood which was shed on the cross of Calvary yes, yes. from his throne. When he looks yes. down, he sees a sinful man coming there, humbling himself, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm coming under that precious blood. You know? Amen. Those who do chemistry, when you add red plus red, it makes white. You come with your red sin under the red blood of Jesus, him from the throne, when he looks upon you, whiter than snow. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. That's why we must, you know, we must always be under the blood Amen. under the blood because when he sees that blood he remembers what he did on the cross Amen. and that work was not in vain Amen. hallelujah Amen. when you are despair when the devil is hitting you so much run to the cross hide yourself under the blood of Jesus Listen, brothers and sisters. Oh. You know, I will read some uh, scriptures. Exodus chapter 13. Yes. I read something. You know, according to many scriptures, we are in a race. As I always tell you, in a race, you can't run a race when you have a lot of, you know, stuff to carry. Put everything, give everything to Jesus, offload yes. all your burden to him. Now you can run freely that race. Mm. He's the one who said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, Come unto me. Yes. How many still go to Jesus? Mm -hmm. yes. Listen, brethren. By God's grace, I'm, uh, you know, by qualification, <laughs> I qualified since 1990 when I became a medical doctor. <laughs> since 1990. And uh, I've seen a lot of miracles happening with patients. We didn't give any tablet. Mm. Mm. Just that name. No. Just that name of Jesus. Amen. Just that name of Jesus. Amen. He's a powerful name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Have you ever seen Someone we are about to take to theater, and then uh, you know that the prognosis is poor. But you see a patient in his corner praying. <coughs> Sometimes, before even you can operate, you notice that the patient is smiling to you, and then you start wondering, Am I dreaming? <laughs> In my profession, it came a time when I was in the bush. I was about to do a life-saving operation, what you call hysterectomy, because that woman had a uterus already 
you know, in peace, she was breathing. I was the only one there with the nurse, and then I said, okay, because she knew how to give anesthesia, I said, okay, I can't just let this woman die, I have to do something. Brethren, I opened that abdomen. Before opening, I said, Lord, you know, I've I've done this, actually, I was an assistant once. I was still very young. But I said, you are the healer. Mm -hmm. I want you to come in and do this operation. Mm -hmm. I did what you call total hysterectomy. It came a time when, you know, and it moved slowly. And then the nurses could see that there was something supernatural taking place. And then one of them asked me, Doc, were you praying? I say, he's here. I did an operation, total hysterectomy, under the guidance of the Lord Jesus. He is alive! Amen. If you trust him, he will never deceive you. Amen. Can you imagine? I was a very young doctor. The following morning, that patient told me, Doc, I would like to go home because I'm feeling much, much better. Say, hey, you don't know what you're asking me. <laughs> she went home without any complication. Yes. There is only one tomb which is empty. Amen. That the tomb of our Lord Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. You can see it. Yes. You can meet him yes. if you if, if that is the desire of your heart. Glory. Yes. 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 yes, I was telling you the other day, brethren. You know, I love that God. The Bible says, "Oh my." Yes, I was about to read Exodus chapter. 14. Listen. Verse 19. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, can you imagine they arrived in front of the Red Sea? We have many Red Seas in our life. <clears throat> you arrive there, you don't know what to do. When you are in Israel, just, you know, if you have an opportunity to see, the Red Sea is huge. The children of Israel were, you know, they came out of Egypt. When they are about to, you know, they found themselves in front of the Red Sea. They didn't know what to do. But remember, brothers and sisters, your journey here on earth from the time when you were born until when you will be taken out of this world God knows it Amen. Mm -hmm. <coughs> that's why you must always go back to it he knows exactly what will happen when we shall leave this room I don't know I don't know the way he knows the way. Mm -hmm. I know the truth. He is the truth. Mm -hmm. yes. Listen, brother. Maybe let me go back. Yeah. Exodus chapter 14 from verse 15. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. Stand still. Mm -hmm. And see the salvation of the Lord. Yes. Which he will show you today. Yes. Yes. As I always say, the children of Israel are not, you know, sorry. Yes. You know what? You know why 
Moses had to speak like that. They cried unto the Lord. Brothers and sisters, I beg you, don't cry unto a man. Go back to him. Verse 14. And the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. I will jump. <coughs> Exodus chapter 15. Verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him an habitation. My father's God. And I will exalt him. I don't know if uh, you have this scripture in your Bible. Listen to what the Bible says. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Amen. Amen. He is a responsible man. He can't just take you from wherever you, you were and leave you like that. We have many examples, brothers who were in the same condition like many of us. And when they cry unto the Lord, he had to intervene. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Listen, my precious brothers and sisters. I don't know if you are aware of this scripture. Jeremiah chapter 23. You know what we are trying to achieve this evening? <clears throat> Is to convince your soul that you are not alone. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ said, I will never leave you alone. Mm -hmm. I always ask this question to many brethren. Can someone show me in the Bible where it is written that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit went back to heaven. Since it came down in Acts chapter 2. The Holy Spirit is here. Yeah. So if the Holy Spirit could work, could work with Peter, the Holy Spirit could work with James, with John, with all the disciples. Now James is not here. Peter is no more here. John is not here. But there must be people having the same attitude like John, Peter, James, through whom the Holy Spirit must work. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Brethren, do you know someone who went to the Lord and then was chased away? And when he comes in, if there was darkness, darkness must be changed, must become light. Yes. If there was any disease, listen, brethren, there is not even a single disease that can resist our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yes, I was about to read Jeremiah chapter 33. Can you imagine what the Bible says? Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. The Bible says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. 
There is a, a free line, you know. How do you call it? Hot line. You can reach God anytime. Instead of calling triple zero, there is one. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. It's not Brother Frank speaking. It is God, your heavenly Father. He's telling you, my daughter, you have a problem. This is my phone number. And his, you know, and his phone number is Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3. Just dial that number. <laughs> Hallelujah! Amen. Brothers and sisters, I beg you, we have a living God. Oh my, he's alive. Amen. He's alive. Amen. Listen, brethren. Oh my. Listen. The Bible says here. Yeah, you know, I feel very happy. What time is it? <laughs> Sometimes uh, I feel like it's only five minutes. <laughs> Listen, brethren, Matthew chapter 16. Do you know the scripture? Matthew chapter 16. When we read from verse 16. Okay, if you have time, you can read the entire chapter. How the disciples were telling him that uh, some think that uh, you are John, some think that you are Elijah, and so forth. And then, <coughs> maybe I will start from verse 15. And he said unto them, But whom saith ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. And Jesus answered and said unto him, <clears throat> Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto, I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, you know, that rock is not Peter. Yes, amen. Let us clarify things. That rock is not Peter. That rock is the revelation of Jesus Christ. Upon this rock, I will build my church. He never said churches. If in Banda Bay there are 1,000 so-called churches, there must be one Amen. that belongs to Jesus Christ. Amen. Listen, brothers and sisters, I will build my church. And listen, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Listen, brothers, listen, sisters. The church of Jesus Christ um, is the church that is built by himself. Amen. I was very glad when this morning when the brother was saying, he is the one who gave to some. You know? The fivefold ministries is not from any seminary where a man will come with a certificate, say from today, because you passed all these uh, tests, uh, you know, everything and everything, therefore, this is your certificate. No. I always ask everyone, 
Can you give me the name of the church where John the Baptist went for training? <laughs> Can you give me the name of that church where Paul he used to be Saul, then he became Paul? The Bible says, Saul who met the Lord Jesus Christ. And it was the Lord who stopped him. What if they were mighty men of God in the Bible, used by God Himself? Why things must be changed today? Because it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Peter never chose to become a disciple. A, a, a disciple of Jesus. You know when you are in around the Sea of Galilee, they will show you. This is where the Lord asked Peter to throw his nets, and this is where Peter was called. The Bible tells us how the Lord Himself called His people. He must do the same today. And a true servant of God has got his own testimony. Mm -hmm. How the Lord met him. Mm -hmm. I was glad when my precious brother was mentioning about it. Read your Bible properly. Mm -hmm. You will not see a single servant of God who is a self-appointee. No! Amen. Amen. You will start with Moses. Actually, he was running away. And the Lord said, you must go. Joshua, read Joshua chapter 1. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. You will see what happened to Elijah, Elisha, all the disciples, Jeremiah. Read Jeremiah chapter 1. From <laughs> Sorry. And you will see how the Lord is saying, when you were still in in the womb of your mother, I chose you. Yes. It has never changed. Amen. Why today people must spend five years, six years to become, you know, and you know, the Bible is, is speaking about when you read the book of Colossians, when it talks about philosophy, it's saying don't be deceived. Yes. Those people who are going to seminaries, they will be given philosophy and whatsoever. Going far away from the word of God. Yes. 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 Brothers and sisters, I beg you. Our God is alive. Amen. He wants us tonight to trust him. Amen. You know, brethren, I wrote the scripture somewhere here. Yeah? I would like to read. Yes. In the book of Philippians. Oh my. Philippians chapter 4. I know we have a lot of problems in life. But listen what the Bible is telling us this year. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. <clears throat> but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches. Yes. In glory by Christ Jesus. Yes. When you read the Bible, just because of time, the Bible says the <laughs> children of Israel, can you imagine for 40 years they were in the wilderness? No shock, nothing. But the Bible says their shoes remain intact. Yes. Yes. Their clothes and everything yes. were intact. Yes. They were fed from above. Yes. They ate manna prepared by who? Angels. Listen, brothers and sisters, please, I beg you, don't <laughs> Don't limit God. Amen. Sometimes we might find 
bitter water. Oh, yeah. Because all of us, we are right. Let us read Exodus chapter 15. I would like to show something. Exodus chapter 15. They walk, they walk, they walk. Yes. I will read from um, Exodus chapter 15 from verse 23. Yes. <clears throat> Maybe, yes. And when they came to Mara, they couldn't drink of the water of Mara, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Mara. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? <laughs> And he cried unto the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Sometimes, remember I told you a few weeks ago, when we were commenting on Romans chapter 8, verse 28, everything works for the good of those who love God. Even when you are going through terrible time, it's good for you. Even when you are suffering, it's good for you. That God, who knows everything, has allowed it. Amen. Yes. Say, but how can I have a, a child who is uh, always sick? It's good for you. you do, do you know why? Because God wants to show you that He is a healer. Amen. But you must trust Him. Amen. You can have a stubborn husband. Can I be stuck on wife? Mm -hmm. Say, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do everything for me to be a good Christian. But why the Lord does allow it? It's good for you. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the problem is, to whom do we go when we are in trouble? Mm -hmm. How many do still trust him? Mm -hmm. You know, when he was going up, in Bethany, he was going this way. He was blessing his disciples. He's still blessing us. He's still blessing us. Brothers and sisters, please, I beg you. Walk with Jesus. And you remember Amos chapter 3 says, Two can walk, cannot walk together unless they agree. You can only agree with Jesus when you do everything according to this book. With this book, this book tells us exactly from top to the bottom how a woman should arrange her hair, the dressing, everything. It is, it is found in the Bible. How a man should behave, everything is found in the Bible. So for you to do anything, you must please Jesus Christ. And to please Jesus Christ is to do everything according to this book. Not according to your denomination, it's like someone was telling me, no, 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 how will you go and ask my pastor? I say, yeah, if your pastor knew about it, he would have told you. Listen, brethren, who is walking with you? Jesus Christ is still knocking. As it is written in the book of Romans, uh, Revelation chapter 3, 
from verse 17, go down 19, 20, 21. He's knocking. Are you ready to open the door of your heart? You want to come in. So that 2 Corinthians chapter 6, from verse 14 to 18, to be fulfilled in you. Where the Bible says, I will walk in them. I will dwell in them. Until when you can say, you know, I'm crucified with Christ. My life is not, is not me anymore. It is Christ living his life in me. Are you ready to borrow your body to Jesus this evening? Yes. To say, Lord, here I am. Can you come and join me? He used the temple when he was here on earth. But now, as the Bible says, do you know that your body is the temple of the living God? Yes. Now, God wants to come and dwell in that temple, which is your body. Are you ready? My brothers, my sisters, we have everything. I always challenge everyone. To show me where it is written in the Bible, a single scripture where people could come to Christ and then remain the same. When we continue here, Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken, to the voice of the Lord thy God, and we do that which is right in his sight. You know, we can say, your pastor can say, oh, this is a wonderful sister, this is a wonderful brother. Is he the same testimony in heaven? Listen, and will give heed to his commandment and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which are brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. My brothers, my sisters, wake up. The Lord Jesus Christ huh, has gone to prepare for us a place, a wonderful place, and that is a place where all our, all of us, huh, his children, must be. He's giving us everything. I think I must close, but I just want to read maybe one more scripture before uh, uh, I close. Brethren, yes, yes, there is a scripture that I have to read. In the book of Romans, yeah, you know, it's like uh, something is telling me, read it, read it, read it. Listen, Romans chapter 10, yes, no, no, no. Romans chapter 9. Can you read it? Yes. Romans chapter 9. Listen, brothers and sisters. The entire church must be restored. Many things have gone astray. Before we read the scripture. When you disbelieve one word of this Bible, you make the word of God without any effect. We must believe. 
And I was listening to a sermon a brother was mentioning this morning. He said, faith is unconscious. Then initially I didn't understand what he was trying to say. He says, faith is unconscious. Faith is unconscious to diseases. Listen, you can be sick, but if you have faith, you see Jesus, you become unconscious to your disease. You know Jesus will heal you. And then he said, he kept on saying faith is unconscious. Faith is unconscious to the world. Faith is unconscious to all our problems. Faith is unconscious. Can you imagine? It's like a child when he's crying, he sees his dad. On the spot, he knows that uh, all my problems are over. Mm. Let me tell you something. <coughs> you come to see your brother Frank. <coughs> hey, I didn't eat since morning. Can you, can you give me at least uh, twenty dollars? I want to buy something. If I take twenty dollars. I give it to you. Just by seeing that twenty dollars in your stomach, you know already I'm gonna buy chips, buy this, buy that, buy that. You haven't yet seen that food. Huh? Mm. Just by seeing that twenty dollars, mm. it is already the answer to your problem. Even if you are very sick, you will. I can promise you. You will manage to walk from me up to the shopping mall. <laughs> you will have something in you that will encourage you to go from here up to the shopping mall. Why? Because you have already $20 in your pocket. The same applies with our Lord. When He invites us here, you must Think of this. The Lord Jesus Christ tonight is giving to each one of us a check. He leaves the top empty and signs down there Jesus Christ. He signs with his own blood. So what you have to do this evening, write whatsoever you wish to get. He has given to you a check. Signed already at the bottom with his own blood. So what you have to do this morning, this evening, by faith, write whatsoever you wish to have. And then take it where? To the storeroom. And in that storeroom, when you bring a check, with uh, a signature of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, with his own blood, you know, his son with his blood, mm -hmm. everything will be given to you mm -hmm. from the storeroom of God. Mm -hmm. Can you believe it, my brothers and sisters? Mm -hmm. yes. Adam and Eve fell because of one word. Mm -hmm. Now, because of so many things that happen, you know, in the course of, you know, from uh, the time when the Lord Jesus Christ went, many wrong things were introduced in the way people are worshipping and whatsoever, whatsoever, which are contrary to the Bible. Actually, there are many people who are worshipping the devil without knowing. If you don't worship God, who are you worshiping? <coughs> Show me in the Bible, wherever it is written before you pray, you must do this. I used to do it. Show me in the Bible. It is not written. It is not recorded. No. But when you look at the Satanist, before they do their stuff, they do the same thing. So you mean God and the Satanists went the same way? No. <coughs> no. The 
Listen, brothers, sisters. The Holy Spirit is restoring everything as it was in the beginning. And when you read your Bible carefully, you will see what we shall experience at this end time will be the double portion of what the first church experienced. The Bible says in closing for today, in Romans chapter 9, verse 28, listen to what the Bible says. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Mm. Hallelujah! Amen. 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 You know, before the rapture, that short work, it will be God himself in each one of us. The same way the Lord could do when uh, you know, during the days of the disciples, it will be the same with us. You speak, things happen. It will not be you, it will be him. When you read the book of Acts, it's not the act of the disciples, no. It's the act of the Holy Spirit through the disciples. Now, if the Holy Spirit is in us, the Holy Spirit will do the same works as it was in the beginning. They could bring people to Paul, just the shadow of Paul could heal people. It will, it will happen. That's why, you know, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, as the Lord said, I will walk in them. Just imagine my precious brother Barrett. The Lord Jesus walking in you. If they bring to you a dead person, if the Lord Jesus Christ is in you, you will speak that day he come back to life. That's where we are going. But the word must be found in us. Because the word is God Himself. That's why we see. We keep on putting a lot of emphasis. The word, the word, the word. The word, the word, the word. The word, the word, the word. Until when John chapter 3 verse 30 can be fulfilled in us, which, which says, I must, you know, uh, uh, become nothing and let him increase in me. Until when you become nothing. And Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ becomes everything. Mm -hmm. Until when you become nothing, and Jesus Christ becomes everything. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for it, brother? Mm -hmm. Are you ready for it, my sister? Mm -hmm. Now, for those who are not yet baptized in the name of Jesus, to start that walk with the Lord, as I said, you must walk with Him. To start that work, you must come back to him, repent from all your sins, and like it. Can you imagine? You just repent, and then he says, All your sins, I put them in the sea of forgetfulness. Yes. You are no more a sinner. You repent from all your sins. And you are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That is how you start the walk with him. Mm -hmm. And then you become part of him. Mm -hmm. My brothers, my sisters, if you have never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, take this opportunity. Mm -hmm. We have rangers here in this church here. Mm -hmm. When you are ready, they will take you either to the swimming pool or wherever they will decide, they will baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ yes. for the remission of your sin yes. and then you will walk with him. Yes. Yes. Amen. And then when you walk like that, yes. you are in the kingdom and then the Lord himself will lead you. 
just because of time. The Bible says, when the children of Israel were walking, he never took from them the pillar of fire, right? And the cloud during the day. He never took it out from them. He was the one showing them the way. And then he will show you the way until we meet him. May the Lord bless you. I will ask my precious brother to come and take over. I love you, my precious brother. You know, from here, I will drive again to Maryborough. Yes, I don't see the distance, you know. I see, yeah, the word of God has been preached. May God bless you, my precious brother. I love you, my precious brothers. This time to all people are here and be quiet. Praise God. Anyone need prayer before we <laughs> All right, then we take and welcome our oh, all our visitors here too. May God bless you, Kim. Bless the Lord. <laughs> 